So today we're going to be ordering numbers on a number line, which means we're going to take some of the skills we learned in the past few videos, um, such as estimating fractions as decimals and estimating square roots as decimals, so that we can place them in order on this line. Now, this concept is going to be gauging the number's relativity. So, albeit what we've done in previous videos sometimes might be very exact, we're going to see how exact we absolutely need to be in order to guess where this is going. So let's go ahead without further ado and jump into the first one and say, how much do we need to know? Okay. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to say, okay, if I need to place these all on the number line, it says I need integer spacing with, or integers with consistent spacing. So that means I'm going to have to put integers on here like negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, and I can't skip. So whatever it has to be, if I'm counting by twos, by threes, by tens, it's got to be the same. And so to make my life the easiest as possible is I'm going to try and count by as few as possible, which means I need to find the lowest number and the highest number. Now, the lowest number I can spot out is going to be negative 10. That's my low number. My high number, I have a 5 or possibly a pi, which means I need to figure out what does pi equal to as a decimal. So now I know that pi is going to be roughly equal to 3.14 but all I need to know is that it's roughly equal to 3.1 to know that it's not going to outweigh that 7. So my lowest and my highest. So now the distance on my number line, because I'm going left and right on the number line, I need to see how far left plus how far right because I've got to separate this number line into two directions, which means I'm going to take the absolute value of each, so 10 plus 7, and then I'm going to add a number in for zero, because I passed the zero marker, that needs its own space as well, which is going to give me 18. And then I'm going to see, okay, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 spaces. I need to fit 18 different numbers on 10 spaces. So I'm going to divide that by 10, which gives me a grand total of 1.8. Well, I know that if I started at negative 10 and counted by 1.8, I'd end up at 7. But again, I have to have integer spacing, which means I'm going to round this up to 2. So my spacing is going to be valued at 2. So I'm going to start at negative 10 and go by 2s. Negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And that shows me that every number on here will fit in this range. So now let's go ahead and let's place the numbers that we know that are on the number line. So let's do this in red. So I know that negative 10 has its own spot on the number line. So negative 10 is right there. Okay. I know that negative 4 is on the number line. I know that zero is on the number line. But what I don't have is a five, a seven, or a pi. They're not on there. So what I need to do is I need to place them tentatively where they could be. Let's see. Five is going to be between four and six. So let me put a light point right there. Seven is going to be between six and eight. And pi is 3.14, so that's going to be in between 2 and 4, a little closer to 4. And then what I'm going to look at is I'm going to say, do I have more than one dot between sets of spacing? So like, do I have two dots between 4 and 6, or two dots between 6 and 8? And the answer is no. So with that, I can confidently just say, I don't need to estimate these any further than what I already know. I know this is going to be roughly equal to pi. I know this is going to be equal to... 5, and I know this is going to be equal to 7. And so there we go. We have our numbers on the number line. Awesome. So if I take a look at number 3, I'm going to run through the same thing. Now, my lowest number I know is going to be my negative number. Don't exactly know what that is as of yet, but my highest number could be either the 8 or the 19 fifths, which means I need to estimate what is 19 fifths. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go ahead and do some long division here. 
And uh, let's go ahead and do this on a separate sheet of paper just to make sure we have room here. Okay, so for number three, I know I'm gonna take five and divide it into 19. Let's see, five fits into one zero times. Bring down my nine. Five fits into 19 three times. And then that's 15, which leaves me with four. And so really at this point, I know it's going to be three point something. What I notice is that I don't have any other numbers that are close to three, maybe a two. So I'm gonna pause right here and say, is three point something all I need to know? Okay. So I know this is three point something. Not exactly sure what. I can do the same thing with this negative 5 fourths. I know this is at least negative 1. It's not quite negative 2, so this is going to be negative 1 point something. So once I do my spacing, I'm going to see, do I need to figure out any more decimals, or can I just stop right there and move on? So let's see. If that's my lowest and that's my highest, my negative 1 point something, I need to be able to bound that, so I'm going to round that up to a negative 2. Actually, I'm going to take the absolute value, so I'm just going to take a positive 2, so scratch that out. I'm adding that to 8, and because I go from negative to positive, I'm going to add in my 0 marker there, which is going to be a total value of 11. I have 10 spaces, so this is equal to 1.1. I have to have integer spacing, so I'm going to round this up to 2. Awesome. So my spacing is by 2s. Here, I'm going to start with my negative 1 point something, so negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Now I know that everything fits all the way by here, but if I went by 1s, I would not have enough space. So I'm going to stick with my spacing of 2. Okay. So let's put the ones that we do have a marker for. I do have a spot at 2. This is my sparker spot of 2. And I do have a spot for 8. Okay. What I need to check out is I'm going to tentatively place my 3 point something, which is somewhere between 2 and 4, and my negative 1 point something, which is somewhere over here. I'm going to check to see, is there are there multiple dots between any two tally marks? And the answer is no, so I don't need to figure out exactly what decimal this is. I can just say, hey, that's all I need to know and say that this is 19 fifths. I don't need to know exactly what decimal this is. I know that this is negative 5 fourths. Perfect. We could figure out the rest of the decimals, but there's no need to. Let's go ahead and save our energy and save our time for a problem that requires it. So Perfect. So now that you've seen how to do that, why don't you go ahead and try and do this one? So the first thing you should be able to do is figure out what their decimal equivalents are and see if you're going to run into any issues here. So give this a shot. Okay. So what you should have run across is the fact that you notice that each one of these is between 0 and 1, which means my whole set of numbers is between the numbers 0 and 1, which I don't even need to do any sort of calculation as to what spacing to do. Everything, as long as there is a 0 and a 1 on the number line, I'm happy because I'm not really going to use the rest. Everything's going to fall between here. So the first number that I know is on the number line is 0. The rest of this is going to fall between this next number. So what I need to do is I need to figure out as many decimals as I need to in order to figure out which order they go in. So let's go ahead and let's pull out our spare sheet of paper. Let's go ahead and start evaluating out some of these decimals. So I'm going to take, let's see, 4 and put it into 3. Next, I'm going to take 8 and put it into 7. And then I'm going to take 16 and put it into 5. Okay. Let's go ahead and try out these 3. So I know I'm going to have to add a few zeros to get started. So 4 fits into 3, 0 times. Bring down my 0, that's 0 0.7. I'm going to pause right there, and I'm going to do the first decimal on each one of these. 
8 doesn't fit into 7. Zero point eight. 16 does not fit into 5. 16 does fit into 50. Let's see, twice would be 32. Three times would be 48. Perfect. And so with my first decimal approximation, I have an order for these. I don't need to go any further. I don't need to figure out what the actual decimal place is. I know that all I need to find out is that this one's going to come first, this one's going to come second, and this one's going to come third. So I know that my 5 sixteenths is a 0 0.3 something. I know that my 7 eighths is going to be a 0 0.8 something. I know that my 3 fourths is going to be a 0 0.7 something. We do not need to figure out the rest of this decimal as it's unnecessary information. And on the first one, it's going to be right here. So one, two, three. So my first one we said is going to be five sixteenths. My second one is going to be seven eighths. And my third one is going to be three fourths. Perfect. So I know that that is the order that they go in on that number line. Awesome. So now if we look at number seven, we're going to run into square roots. So we've done a previous video on how to estimate these square roots. Let's go ahead and figure out what my lowest, what my highest is. As of right now, it could be anything. So I know that the square root of 40 is somewhere between, let's do this in green. So the square root of 40 is between the square root of 36 and the square root of 49, which means it's somewhere between 6 and 7. So let's estimate this to be, let's say, 6.5 and see if we need to calculate that out any further. Let's do this one in orange. I know the square root of 30 is somewhere between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36, which is between 5 and 6. So let's say this is 5.5. So if we're looking at integer spacing, what I know is that my lowest number is going to be 5.5-ish. My highest number is going to be 7, which means I'm really not worried about doing any sort of weird spacing, just as long as I have something below that and something above that. So let's say five, six, seven, eight. Everything else is non-necessary. As long as I have that, I'm happy. Okay. Let's put the ones that we do know. I have a six and a seven. So this is my six, and this is my seven. Let's put a tentative spot for my 6.5 and my 5.5. What I notice is that there's no other number that I'm trying to order in between these like I was doing up there. So that means my original guess is all I really need to know. I don't care if it's 6.5 or 6.4, it's the only one that's in between these two numbers. So let's go ahead and pop this as my square root of 40. I know that this is going to be the equivalent of my square root of 30. So it goes square root of 30, 6, square root of 40, 7. Awesome. And so let's go ahead and check out another similar problem with nothing but square roots. So with this one, I have no idea which one's the highest and which one's the lowest in a numerical sense, but I do know that the square root of 19 is going to be the lowest that's going to be the next, and that's going to be the biggest number. So all I need to do is figure out how big is my number line going to be. Well, let's see. Let's do the square root of 19. So the square root of 19 is somewhere between 16 and 25, which means it's 4 point something, because it's between 4 and 5. So let's say 4.5. Good enough. We could say 4.4, but let's see if we actually need to do anything about it. Um, let's do an orange. The square root of 40, which we know comes next, that's between 36 and 49. 
which is between 6 and 7. So let's call that 6.5 and see if we need to expand on it. And then the square root of 50, well, that's between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64, which is between 7 and 8. Let's call that 7.5. And so with those three guesses, I only have a span of three, which means I don't really need to worry about spacing again, as long as I have a number below that and above that. So let's say four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm happy. The rest of it's just added. Perfect. So let's tentatively place our numbers, because none of these fall exactly on the number line. I have a 4.5, a 6.5, and a 7.5. I'm going to check to see do I have more than one dot between any spaces? And the answer is no. So I don't actually need to do a further guess for any of these. What I've got is good. Let's go ahead and do that. So my 4.5 spot is going to be my root 19. My 6.5 spot is going to be my root 40. My 7.5 spot is going to be my root 50. Perfect, so I have these numbers in order. I don't need to do anything further. Awesome. So now that you've seen that in action, why don't you go ahead and try number 11. Pause the video, unpause it when you're done, and see how well you did. Okay. So now that we've seen those, let's give this a shot. So with my 5 14ths, I know that this is going to be roughly equal to 2 point something. I don't know what that is, because I know 5 goes into 14 twice, so 2 point, don't know what that is, but that's a good guess. I know that the root 12, let's take a look over here, root 12, well that's between root 9 and root 16, which means it's somewhere between 3 and 4. So I'm going to take a good guess at 3.5. And then my last number is 6, so I need to go from 2 to 6, which means I'm not worried about the spacing, so let's go ahead and say 2 three, four, five, six, and I'm happy. Perfect. Let's place numbers that we know already have a spot. Just the one, my number six, and tentatively place two other spots. I have a 3.5 and a two point something. Check to make sure there's not more than one spot in between any brackets, and there isn't, so I don't need to figure out anything further. So my two point something is going to be my 14 fifths. And my three point something, or estimated 3.5, is going to be my root 12. Perfect. So I have these numbers listed in order. And so again, number 13, this is the last one we're gonna to do together. Why don't you go ahead and pause number 13 and give that one a shot and see how well you did. Okay. Now that you had a chance to try it out, let's take a look at this. Well, this one's got a lot going on. Um, I have root 2, I have 11 sevenths, and 6 fifths. Um, I know 6 fifths is going to be 1 point something, so I'm not really sure on that. This is also going to be 1 point something. And root 2 is going to be 1 point something, so we're going to have to do some work here. So on number 13... Let's go ahead and do the first decimal, so 6 fifths. I'm going to take 5 and divide it into 6. I'm going to go two decimals in and just see where we're at. So 0 .00. zero. Let's see, 5 fits into 6 one time. Bring down my 0, 2, and that terminates, which means I am exactly at 1.2. Okay, can't go any further with that. If I'm looking at 11 sevenths, let's take 7 divided into 11. Let's see, I'm going to go two decimals out if need be. So 11, or 7 goes into 11 once. So 7, subtract that, that's 4. Bring down my 0. Make sure my decimal is translated up there. 7 goes into 40. Let's see, 5 times for 35. 7 times for 49, 
And if I need to go farther, I'm currently at 1.57. So far, so good. Now, the last thing is the square root of 2. Let's give ourselves some extra room here. So we're going to do this in... Let's see, we've been doing this in green. So root 2. I know that's somewhere between root 1 and root 4, which means it's somewhere between 1 and 2. It's really close to 1, so I'm going to say it's either going to be 1.1, 1.2, or 1.3. I'm going to check to see which one. Now, I have to check all three because if it's 1.1, it's going to be to the left of this number. If it's 1.2, I'm going to check to see how close it is to 1.2 if it's above or below because it could fall on either side of this. And then if it's 1.3, I'm going to have to keep checking until I know if it's for sure less than 1.5. So let's see where we're at. 1.1, 1, 1, carry my 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. I had two decimals in my original, so I'm at 1.2, so I'm a little under. So let's go for that. I'm under by 0 0.79. Let's try the next one. Let's see, that is going to be 4. 2, hold my 0, 2, 1, 4, 4, 1. I had two decimals, so two decimals. Still under, but I'm getting closer. 0 0.56. So getting better. So I know that this number, as of right now, is going to be larger than 1.2. So this is going to be my first number. It can either go to this one next or this one next, depending on if this one is higher or lower than 1.57. Let's go ahead and keep working on this one. So it's 9, 3, hold my 0, 3, 1, 9, 6, 1. Two decimals, two decimals. Get closer. That's under 0 0.31. So I was way off in my original guesses. We need to go all the way up to 1.4 because I still haven't passed where it's at. 16, carry my 1. That's 4 plus 1 is 5. 4, 1, 6, 9, 1. Ooh, we're really close now. That's 1.96, which means I'm under by 0 0.4. Or 0 0.04. We're really close. So now I'm going to try my last one, my 1 1.5, and see where we're at here. 5, carry my 2, 7, hold my 0, 5, 1, 5, 2, carry my 1, 2.25. Okay, so we passed it up. Two decimals. I am now over by 0 0.25 which means my best bet for my root 2 is going to be 1.4. Awesome. Let's see. So I have my three estimates, 1.2, 1.57, and 1.4. Let's translate that onto here. So root 2, we said our best estimate for root 2 is going to be a 1.4. And the 11 sevenths, we work that out, is going to be a 1.57. And pi, we know to be a 3.14. I go from 0, which is my lowest, to my highest number is 3.14. So I'm not worried about scaling on this one. So I'm just going to say, how about 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Everything fits in there. So I don't care about the rest. So if I'm going from 0 to 3.4, Everything falls in there. I'm placing my numbers 10. Well, I've got one that falls on the number line. My number is 0. And let's see. So I have 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 and 1.5. They all fall right there. And then I have my 3.14. So yes, because all three of them fell in this little spot, I'm glad we figured out which order they came in because that is going to prove critical. Um, my pi over here really doesn't matter because it's the only one in this little gap. 
but these three, I did have a one, two, three punch. So I'm gonna to need to plot them in the right order. So six fifths is the first one. Then I have root two is the second one. And then I have 11 sevenths is my third one. So the order that they go in is zero, six fifths, root two, 11 sevenths, pi. And so that's how we order numbers on a number line. There you go.